some issues transpire over the last few weeks, you know what I'm saying? Senpai Corporation's funding was running low, so I couldn't edit the previous chapter review and several other videos I had lined up. So if y'all would like to help support the channel even further, right, in any way, the dono link is in the description. Anyway, this chapter initiated exactly what I thought it would. Tom Z is on the move and headed directly for us. And the biggest question is, is he going to bring Amo along with him? Because that ties in with Kuro giving us the drop on where she is. And as we've seen through Kuro's memories, he knows everything. So is it going to reveal that Tom Z's the traitor or is a traitor, I should say? Or is there more to Tom Z than just that? I want to give him the benefit of the doubt because he's been with us for so long and helped us out in ways that without him, we'd be in trouble. Go back to the Amo chapter, funny enough. The fight between the cleaners and raiders have concluded and with Zodil on the ropes, he flees. And Kuro's insight proved me wrong just a tad about Zodil's transformation. And the best news is... Boxy is still alive. I like that name, by the way. And not to be an asshole, but this is the first time the translation team gets a pass for me because Boxy is pretty cool. I think it's pretty funny. It was a pretty decent chunk that happened this chapter. And of course, I'm going to give you the details on it. As y'all know, man, I'm Damo Senpai, and we are here going over chapter 108 of Gachi Akata. And if y'all are new to the channel and have yet to subscribe, go ahead, pull up. Come on now. Hit the subscribe button, support your boy. Help me reach 10K. 10K means a lot for creators because for the most part, that's like the starting point of getting real things done. I was trying to get there before the end of summer, but well, you know, we already here and it didn't happen. But that's besides the point. But don't get it twisted. Just because I haven't hit 10K by the end of summer doesn't mean I'm gonna take it easy. Hell no. We turning this up by continuing to shoot for that, but go a thousand times harder. What y'all thought? I was gonna ease up on the gas because I ain't hit that shit? I got a lot planned for the rest of the year and we will get that done all of it now that we got all the extra shit out of the way y'all know we got it First thing I want to talk about is Zodil's wings. Rudo pointed out that they were much different than before, and it's true because we've seen two other forms that were different than this one. This seems like the full evolution of those two forms, but what was even more interesting was the fact that Rudo said he can use multiple powers with one vital instrument like me. I find that to be fascinating because I never really saw Rudo's ability like that. Because if you remember, he can bring out the full ability of things. Well, if we think about it in that fashion, then what he says is true. So let's bring this around to Zodil. And admittedly, I was wrong because Curl pointed out that the sandwich he was eating was the trigger for the shape change. And Zodil did not like that. Usually when someone makes a face like that, it's because he hit the nail on the head. So is it based on the bird that he eats that he gains those wings? Or maybe the sandwich is like a catalyst for his rage? This is some head cannon type shit, but like he was poor and didn't really have food like that. So when he eats, it reminds him of that. I don't know, man. I'm really interested to find out what that is because Zodil's power for the most part is a mystery. We just know that he turns into a bird-like creature and can fly and shit. That's what we really know. And lastly, on the Zodil topic, I remember I was having a conversation on Twitter with a homie about Zodil caring about Momoa, and I told him that he doesn't really care about Momoa as a person. What he cares about is her ability. And this chapter helped that case even more because Kuro even pointed out that Zodil was going to use him as insurance in case Momoa didn't wake up, which I didn't put that chapter video out due to not having the funds for Adobe, but that's neither here nor there. It was the same thing about Nelda, right? She was with him for years and immediately was thrown away once her usefulness was gone y'all gotta remember bro these guys are villains at the end of the day and to even further credit that point he called momoa goods not even a person just goods but we'll get to that later hell let's look at one of the most heinous ones and that is how aizen duped momo momo thought the world of him and he gave the notion that he thought the same of her and then boom betrayal stab same type of situation here Anyway, let's move on to the next topic of conversation, and that is the fact that Boxy lives. I thought that he wasn't out because of what Zodil did to him a few chapters ago, but apparently he is? Weird how that worked out. But aside from that, Boxy is still here, and just when I thought he was going to put in some work, he can't. 
<laughs> Apparently, due to how Rudo summoned him and the thought that was infused, he can only put things inside of it. And he also can't move. I can't wait to see this moment animated, by the way, because the buildup for him moving is nasty work. And it's going to be hilarious in real time. But what this did was give Engine enough time to intervene and grab Kuro. By the way, using his Umbreaker as a hook to grab Kuro was pretty genius in my opinion. The imagery here is pretty funny because seeing Kuro get spun around like clothes in the dryer had me cracking up for a few minutes, bro. I'm not gonna lie. And yeah, of course we get this shot of Engine posing in front of Boxy, which was hella clean. I always call these hero shots because for the most part, when we see shit like this, the hero just did something sick and is letting you know by stancing up. Now we gotta talk about the follow-up to this moment. And that is Zodil understanding the price that he had to pay to get the information that he wanted. Zodil heard that the price was waiting one month to get the goods. And you know, by proxy, allowing Momoa to have her mind shattered, right? She took a brain shock and is now out for the next month. And what makes this even funnier is that immediately after he heard about what the price and all that stuff was, he flew off and stated that he had no further business here and also let Rudo know that his ass is grass next time he sees him. It was short and to the point, which I like because Zodil comes across as the type of person who doesn't like to overstay his will. He was like, oh, this is all I gotta do? Bet, I'm out. Hey, Rudo, next time I see you, I'm on your ass. And then dips, right? I also like how Rudo points out, almost as if this was like a fourth wall moment, that I'll think of this as a flag. That shit was sick because that's what popped up in my head when he said that. And it was also a callback to what Enja was saying to, I believe it was, it was Ryo, if I'm not mistaken, prior to us starting this game of tag with Curl. Really cool shit there, Rana Sensei. I love the callback moments. Callback moments are always sick. So now that the fighting has concluded and we had time to talk about price and trust, let's segue into to the final topic of Thompson. Engine brings up wanting to find Amo as soon as possible. And just as Rudo says, thank you, we shift over to the man responsible for that. Tomsey. Now, generally, I wouldn't want to hop into speculation mode here, but notice how Tomsey's bubble is outlined on par with Zodil's. Not saying that this is a sign that he was never with us, right? Not saying that that was a thing, but I mean, if the writing was on the wall, this was it. But it goes back to what I said previously, too, that he was going to show up and help us as a member of the South Branch. Now, it could turn out that he isn't a South Branch member, but the fact that he's deciding to show up is is still a fact. But the biggest question is that, is he gonna bring Amo with him? And what is it gonna say about it? Because we know Kuro more than likely knows that he is the culprit behind this. And if he lets that fact out, all hell's gonna break loose. And by the way, doesn't this also signify the fact that there is another faction at play here? Oh, and before I get it any further, right? I just thought about something. Could it be that Kuro set that up, right? That Kuro reached out to Tomzy and had Amo put in a basement somewhere. So that way she couldn't be used as a bargaining chip by Zodil? I don't know. Just something I thought about. But anyway, Zodil usually has all of his stuff planned out ahead of time. And if Tomzy was indeed a raider, wouldn't he have been a bit more relaxed because he has somebody on the inside? Just something to think about as we get closer to wrapping up the mystery that is Tomzy. Another question I have is, will Amo confess to the fact that Tomzy was the one who kidnapped her? This all banks on the fact that Tomzy brings Amo with him and tries to spin a narrative on how he got her in the first place. I don't know, man. So much to think about, so little time. But that does it all for today. Leave a like if you enjoy, subscribe if you're new. I appreciate y'all for coming through, checking out the videos, doing your due diligence, doing the usual schmoozal, and supporting me the way you do. Thank y'all, and I hope y'all enjoyed the rest of your evening, afternoon, night, wherever you are. It's your boy, Damo Senpai, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thank you.